Isaiah chapter 59. I'll read from verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Look what it says here. Are you wondering why God doesn't save you? Or why you can't be saved? It isn't that God's hand is too short that he can't save you, or that his ear is heavy so that he can't hear your prayers asking for salvation. So then what is it? Verse 2. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. What does this mean? If you take a look here, suppose this is God, and this is me here. Everyone, no matter who they may be, has sin within them. When this sin manifests itself, and the individual commits a sin, that sin goes before God, where it accumulates with all the others he has committed. Since the sins we commit accumulate like this in front of God, he is unable to save us because of them. Even if I pray to God, my prayer only goes as far as this barrier of sin, and there it stops. That prayer never reaches God. This is the point. Particularly when it comes to these verses in Isaiah chapter 59, people who believe in Jesus these days tend to read the words but not think about what they are saying. Do you know how they go about believing in Jesus? The first thing they learn in the process of believing in Jesus is how to pray. Secondly, they learn hymns. And then they learn about the Bible. Someone may say to a friend, you should believe in Jesus. So the friend goes along to see what it's all about. And the first thing he learns is how to pray. He hears the person at the front praying and saying, God our Father, we thank you. We truly thank you. And he soon learns from this and starts praying in the same way himself. But he doesn't know that his prayers cannot reach God. Until you solve the problem of your sin, praying is of no use to you at all. Please take a moment to think about this. Perhaps you've said a lot of prayers until now. But had you completely solved the problem of your sin before you started praying? Or have you just been praying, even though the problem of your sin remains? If you have been praying, even though your sin is still there before God, all of those prayers have been in vain. Those prayers never reached God. In Matthew chapter 6 it says, When you pray, go into your room, and pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. This is what the Bible says. Jesus said this. He said that we shouldn't say the same prayers over and over again. God already knows what you need before you ask Him. When it comes to prayer, there are prayers that are said in public. There are prayers that are more like sermons. There are various different forms of prayer. You don't need to act like that. If there is something that you earnestly desire, you need only express this desire before God like a young child. That is prayer. In the case of a newborn baby, it is praying when it cries. When it raises its arms and legs and wriggles them around crying, that is a kind of prayer. And when its mother hears that, she comes running. She checks to see if there is any smell coming from the diaper. She checks to see if the diaper needs to be changed, or she tries to nurse the baby in case it's hungry. Crying is the baby's prayer. Then when the child gets a little older, he might go to his father and say, Dad, I need to buy something for school. But suppose this child, suppose the child's father happened to be the president of his country. Would the child then go to his father and say, Your Excellency, Honorable Mr. President, is this how he would address his own father? He would just say father or dad. Yet some people, when they pray, use very grandiose expressions. They say things like, Lord God of hosts, Lord of lords. That is a speech, not a prayer. So there are prayers that are more like speeches. There are chants. There are prayers that are like sermons. And there are even prayers in which someone comes along and hits the back of the people who are praying. But none of these different kinds of prayers are true prayers. They are all just part of formalized rituals. This is not what a prayer is. How do you address the person you are closest to? Let me ask you a question. 
who are the two closest people in your family. For those who are married, their spouse is the person they are closest to, isn't it? When a husband and wife are sitting at the dinner table together, does the wife address her husband in a loud voice using expressions like, My husband, most honored president of such and such a company. Will she do that? No, they will speak softly to each other so others around will not hear what they are saying. Prayer is a conversation between God and a person who has true life within him. Of course, if you are leading prayers in public, you need to speak in a voice loud enough for everyone to hear. But there is something very wrong with the way in which people in general perceive what prayer should be. Ceremonial formalities, such as chanting or reciting the Lord's Prayer, have crept into the Christian churches in general. And so the concept of prayer has been corrupted. This is not the way prayer should be. People say that praying is like breathing. Let me ask you a question. Is it living people who breathe or dead people who breathe? Do I need to ask? Have you ever seen a corpse breathing? If praying is like breathing, people who are alive breathe automatically. If praying is the same as breathing, once you are saved and the problem of your sins has been solved, you will automatically pray to God. You find yourself praying automatically and naturally. But if you are not saved and your sins are blocking the way, you may pray in the form of a chant, or a speech, or a sermon. But none of it will be any use to you at all. If any of you has been in the habit of praying until now, please think about this very deeply. Ask yourself if God has really heard your prayers. If there was never a time when the problem of the sin between you and God was completely solved, you can assume that God has never heard your prayers. 듣지 않으셨다고 생각하면 됩니다.